Welcome to the Carson City Culture and Tourism Authority Board of Directors meeting for Monday, June 8th, um, 2020 at 4 p.m. We're in the Carson City Community Center in the Sierra Room. Can I get a call to order? Roll call, I'm sorry. Mike Riggs. Here. Mike Jones. Here. Santos. Here. Stacy Giomi. Stacy, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? There you are. We have a quorum. Thank you. Can I ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. At this time, I'll ask for any public comment. The public is invited to comment on and discuss any topic that is relevant or within the authority of this board. There is no public comment, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Hearing no public comment, we'll move on uh, to item five, approval of minutes for the May 11th, 2020 CTA board meeting and the May 20th, 2020 CTA fiscal year 21 budget hearing. Any questions or concerns about the midget uh, minutes or uh, changes? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. I get a second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Hearing none, the motion passes. Moving on to item six, um, adoption of the agenda. Uh, unless anybody has any reason to move anything, I propose to keep the agenda as written. Hearing no objections, we'll move on uh, to the consent agenda. Um, at this time, I'll ask any um, board members that they would like um, anything pulled for individual discussion. I have none. Hearing none, I'll, I'll ask any member of the public uh, if they want anything pulled for individual discussion. Hearing none, um, we will move on to item. Oh, can I get a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, uh, agenda passes, or motion passes. Um, item nine, discussion and possible action regarding approval of amendment number 01 to contract number CTA 1920-001 with KPS3 titled Creative Content Development and Public Relations slash External Communications. David? Thank you, Chair Jones. For the record, David Peterson, Executive Director with the Carson City Culture and Tourism Authority. Uh, agenda number nine is an amendment to the existing content uh, contract excuse me, uh, with KPS3 for the creative content development and then the public relations. So this extends the value uh, by an additional $256,500 for the next two fiscal years. So fiscal year 21 and fiscal year 22. The fiscal year 21 amount was previously built into the contract that, or not the contract, the contract amount was built into uh, the budget for fiscal 21. So that has already been taken into consideration from that perspective. This is just giving me the authorization on this next series of contract amendments to be able to sign these on behalf of the CTA with the vendors. Any questions or discussion with David on this contract? No, I'll, I'll make the motion to move to approve the amendment, amendment uh, number 01 to contract number CTA 1920-001 with KPS3. Stacy, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Hearing none, uh, motion passes. 
on to item 10 on the agenda discussion and possible action regarding approval of amendment uh, number 01 to contract number CTA 1920-002 with computer artistry entitled creative content development and public relations along with external communications. David again. Thank you Chair Jones. Uh, so this amendment specifically is limited to extending the length of the contract with Tara and her firm uh, for two additional fiscal years. We actually have enough authority in the existing contract where we don't need to increase the not to exceed value. So this is the specific work that is done with different events, so those that we're endorsing. Uh, Tara is the company that's responsible, Tara Burke, uh, does that create. <coughs> so this, again, is to extend the contract for two additional years and no additional value because we have an, uh, enough of value in the contract right now. Any questions, concerns? I'll make the motion. I'll, I move to approve amendment number 01 to con contract CTA 1920-002 uh, with computer artistry. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Hearing none, uh, motion passes. Um, on to item 11, discussion and possible action regarding Approval of amendment number 01 to contract number zero or contract number CTA 1920-003 with KPS 3 titled web slash di digital development and e-marketing customer relationship management CRM again, David. Uh, thank you chair Jones So this is the second of the two contracts that we have with KPS 3 as you said it's the web and the CRM contract, and this amendment uh, increases the value by $60,000 for two additional fiscal years. So this contract will end June 30, 2022. Any questions from the board? No, I'll go ahead. Yes, I'll Sam, I, I do have a question, sorry. Sorry, guys. Um, <clears throat> I was trying to get unmuted there. Um, David, the the Contract says that it's a maximum amount of 195. Is that the life of the contract going back to the original uh, contract through now or through the this two year refresher? That is correct. That's the total okay. not to exceed value. Yes. And what have we spent so far? I need to think about that uh, for a second. That may be Stacy. I may need to get back with you. We don't have a lot of authority left from the original 135,000. To be honest with you, it's probably five to ten thousand dollars, maybe, that we didn't spend when we shut things down in the middle of March. So it's not a lot that's left on this particular contract. But if okay. I can get back to you uh, on that, I will do that to give you the exact amount. It's okay. I just I just wanted to make sure that that we're monitoring that and that you know we don't we don't go over that amount. Absolutely. So we're tracking that internally with our own log files for the contracts, so we don't exceed okay. uh, those values, uh, the cumulative value. So Chris does an excellent job of of keeping us in line with the contracts. Mm -hmm. But, but um, board member Jim, he's right. We need a number, and you know, reach out and get us that to the board. I will send you all an email with the exact amount that we've spent against the original 135000 Yes. Okay. So I'll do it through uh, May, through the charges that we incurred through May. Thank you. Any other questions? Done. Um, OK, I'll go ahead and move to approve the amendment <clears throat> number 01 to contract CTA 1920-003 with KPS3. Stacy, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm opposed. Aye. Hearing none, motion passes. Uh, on to item 12, discussion and possible action regarding approval of amendment number 02 to sponsor sponsorship agreement number CTA-SA-20-01 with Bike Monkey Inc. for the Peter Satina Carson City Pater Prospect Ride. David. Thank you, Chair Jones. So this sponsorship 
agreement that we have in place with Carlos Perez for the Statna ride, which was the gravel grinder ride. Had we not had COVID-19, would have started this September and then run for three years. Uh, due to COVID-19 and some issues that he, Carlos, has run into in California with all of his other races, his entire schedule has had to shift back approximately 14 weeks. We looked at the option of trying to do this race uh, in November, and it just didn't seem to make sense uh, in the middle of November in the Pine Nuts, given the kind of weather that we can have right at that time of the year. So the decision was made to push this event back to September of 2021. Uh, and start fresh. We will, we will keep the event in September uh, moving forward. So this amendment just allows us to have the third event in 2023. So that's that's what this amendment is for. No additional value, just simply sort of pushing the ball forward by a, a year. Since we didn't have 20, it just moves to, the, it was a three-year contract, right? Uh, three-year sponsorship agreement, three yes. Year sponsorship. Mm -hmm. And so we're just retaining uh, having three events, uh, so 2021, 2022, and 2023, September. Yes. Right. Questions from the board? Value-wise, it's going to stay the same, you said? Identical amount of money, yeah. Yeah, the 23K per uh, event, not a nickel more, yes. Okay. Um, I'll move to approve the amendment number two to sponsorship agreement number CTA SA 20 01 with Bike Monkey Inc. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. On to item 13 on the agenda monthly non action items for presentation and discussion only. Uh, Executive Director update, David. Thank you, Chair Jones. I just have a couple of quick things on my report for this month. Uh, Lydia and I had a chance to present the proposed plan for the Kit Carson Trail for the $20,000 uh, that uh, Stacy uh, Giomi was kind enough to get for us through the Redevelopment Authority. Uh, so we presented to the Redevelopment Authority Citizens Committee on June 1st. Uh, the plan was very well received, I do believe. Uh, the next step in this Lee Plummel will come back to the Board of Supervisors, if I understand correctly, and present to, to them later on this month. Um, I'll be available for questions during the presentation if there are any. And then uh, we have to also do a formal presentation once we have the actual marker itself uh, comped up, set up with the uh, Silver State Industries in front of the Historic Resources Commission. So that's Hope Sullivan and that uh, board or that, that group of folks. Uh, to give us, I guess, the official blessing that, yes, uh, this marker will work. It can be placed in the, uh, what are they called, the, plant, the planter strips, the, the green belt strips uh, in front of the home. So uh, just an update uh, in terms of where we're at with the uh, Kit Carson Trail and working on these markers. But it was, it was really great because we are able to include uh, some of the leftover dollars of that $20,000 to use that toward the printing of the brochures and the folding, accordion folds or the special folds that we have to do. And uh, there's going to be about $500 left over. So we'll put that toward a search campaign when we kick this off. Um, so it was nice. Ronnie is the, Ronnie Hanneman is the chair of that, of that uh, particular uh, committee. And she said, let's do a big to do and a kickoff, and so we'll do that. I think at the Curry House with Andy Fant uh, because she would she would love to have all the markers set up there. So I think we'll be able to do something hopefully in October around this with a big to do and a big kickoff. So that's a, a brief update on the Kit Carson Trail, and then in terms of grants, uh, Chris and the team they did a great job. Uh, they finished pulling together the first two cycles of fiscal year twenty, about fifty seven thousand dollars worth of grant. Uh, reimbursements. Uh, we were able to get those submitted at the end of May, and we I can confirm that those have been accepted um, all as well, and hopefully we will receive those fifty-seven, almost $57,000 of funds within the next seven to 10 days. So we're all caught up in terms of any outside monies uh, that were owed um, from the grant processes that we applied for. So with that, um, happy to answer any other questions, but that's just a couple of Brief updates for this month. Questions, board, on the executive director's report. Um, hearing none, we'll go to the transient occupancy tax, actual versus forecast. David? 
Thank you, Chair Jones. Uh, so this month, this is a new report that you're seeing, and this came as a result of the two meetings in May uh, where you had asked uh, us to put together a report that sort of looks at the pacing. Uh, what did we project? What did we think we were going to do when we submitted the actual final budget to the Department of Taxation? So that's the second meeting that we had the budget hearing uh, in May. And so this is a first crack at what the report would look like. Um, so I'll walk everybody through this uh, ever so briefly if I can. Uh, so the first row, as you see, those are the fiscal 19 monthly actuals. This is taxable revenue, just as a reminder. The second row is fiscal 20. So that was the forecast that we had prepared as it relates to our final budget submission. So that was back uh, on the 11th of May. And what you're looking at are the, those projections and then what that percentage of increase or decrease is uh, as compared to fiscal 19. So at the time, we projected a 26.5% decrease for fiscal 20 relative to fiscal 19. The next row is fiscal 20 actual, and then you see blue uh, for the forecast. As we're getting actual data in, we're going to be updating this spreadsheet every month. And so that was the ask that you all had of us uh, last month was to put in actuals as we get them. So it's always going to be a point in time measurement. Um, so in this case, the actual data for April was as of the 2nd. So it was any remittances that we received from the properties uh, through the 2nd. And then what I'm also doing in, in talking with uh, Chair Jones about this is revising, uh, in this case, May and June, and then I also will talk about 21, but I went ahead and made some additional revisions looking outward just based on new data that we're aware of. I'm still working very closely uh, with, with the state, with Travel Nevada folks and their economists as well uh, to try to do our best. You know, th there's a lot of guessing involved, I'll be honest with you here. Um, there's, there's really no model for this, right, to sort of doing this as we go. Uh, but that is that is the commitment uh, that that I have is every month we will bring you guys the most current data that we have. So you know April you see 476 thousand. That number is going to be different. It'll be higher next month only because collections will come in from properties this week. They may even come in next week, right? There's been a little bit of a delay with certain properties, right? As you can imagine, trying to get staff up and up and running. So. That's what we've got going on for the fiscal 20 uh, actual forecast column. And then what I wanted you guys to just see as well is what the percentage of decrease is uh, in terms of us reprojecting those numbers for April, May, and June, and then what that net effect is on fiscal 20. So again, if you go back up to the second row, you'll see that we had April and May down 90% was our projection at the time. June was 75%. And again, for the fiscal year, it was 26.5%. We've revised those projections now, primarily based on the actuals that have come in for the month of April. Uh, so we've got, a, got a down about 71.43%. But again, we know that there are properties that are missing, right? Uh, so revise the May projection to be down negative 70, June negative 60. And so in terms of the fiscal year, we'll be down just below about 22% is what we're projecting right now. So a little better, obviously, uh, than what we thought back in May. As far as the last two uh, rows, Again, the fiscal 21 forecast, that was as of submitting the final budget. So if you scroll all the way over to uh, the right, you'll see we thought we'd be up about 5.4% for fiscal 21 relative to fiscal 20 uh, and working with, with Chair Jones and again, uh, the folks at the state. I've made some adjustments July through November specifically. And so I brought that projection down a little bit for fiscal 21 relative to what we had projected back in May, if you all recall, for the budget hearing. So this is the proposed kind of layout and spreadsheet, and I'm, I'm open to any comments, good or bad, or if you'd like to see the, the data uh, in a different, different manner, but we're trying to get this to fit onto one piece of paper, more or less, for all of you. So this is kind of our plan moving forward. This will be our Bible by which we're going to work on expenditures as well, right, as we're tracking that revenue coming in against what we thought we were going to get by month. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. No, I I'm, I like the format. It, it's easy for me to read. It's uh, something I'm used to. But if somebody wants it presented in a different uh, way, I'm, I'm happy to 
changes. I'm glad our crystal ball, your crystal ball, was off a little. Uh, we did better than we thought. Uh, that that's the good news, but uh, certainly open to questions. Happy to miss on the on the negative side every month. So I'd, I'd like to see us beat the beat the number every month. So, um, so my question is: So David, you're gonna we're gonna have this every every month going forward, and and get it keep up to date, correct? That's correct. We'll have it as a standing agenda item underneath this section thirteen. I yeah, do like the form. And if you if you do want it in between too, just let me know. Let us know as well, um, because things are going to change throughout the month. Every time a new property uh, remittance comes in, it'll flow into this and update, and then I'll look at the outward months and make those adjustments as necessary. And I too like the format, David. I appreciate you putting this together, and it gives us something to hold on to for the rest of the year, and we can kind of see how things kind of transpire. So thank you for putting that together for us. Of course. Can I make a comment? Please. Thank you. Um, David, I, I like it too. Thank you. I find it easy to read and uh, I appreciate having the information. I just, I, I know we're only eight days into June, but I'm wondering if you've heard from any of the properties you've talked to how their res reservations look for the month of June. I haven't heard huge, uh, I guess, upswing, you know, in terms of properties that have been open the whole time. Um, I don't know if Mike might want to comment about just having opened on the 4th, but uh, I do expect things will, will improve a little bit. Part of the issue was not knowing and the timing and right of the casinos opening and the phase two. So it's a booking window thing, you know. So right now I think if we pick anything up, I think it's honestly going to be toward the end of June, maybe for the well, uh, 4th of July weekend. And, and certainly part of it is the fact that there really are no events for people to come to. You know, normally there's there's sporting events or there's, you know, this event or that event, and, and you know, we know those are all off. So, I mean, that's certainly going to continue to impact things, I think, um, you know, for, I, for months. I completely agree with you. And when we get into the marketing presentation from with Lydia a little later, uh, we'll we'll kind of address what we're going to do to counter the fact that we don't have any events. You know, uh, James will address events too during his presentation. But yeah, this is a it's a killer for us as a as a special events as a sports tournament town uh, to not have any events hypothetically until maybe the 11th uh, between the 11th and 16th of July. So we need to pick up other types of visitors, right? Who maybe are going to come in and enjoy the outdoor recreational aspects of what we have going on, whether that's motocross, motorbike, hiking. Um, and then hopefully we'll get museums back up and running, uh, trying to work with Myron and, and that group to understand, and same thing with the Stewart facility, when they're going to open those facilities back up and under what protocols and guidelines and what does that look like, you know, in terms of the number of people that can actually go in and, and experience uh, the museums or the Stewart facility. So, but I'll, I'll let yeah. Chair Jones talk a little bit um, about opening up last week. You know, June is, 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 is better than we thought, uh, but still going to be very soft. Considering a couple of weeks ago we had, you know, there was no occupancy and, uh, but we are um, seeing an uptick in July and reservations starting to pick up for July. So that's positive. But, uh, yeah, I think it's just what um, David said. It's going to be a uh, June will will continue to be soft throughout the uh, the rest of this month, but July's looking better. You want any questions, questions for David on the report? How about moving on to the actual transient occupancy report then? Okay, so. Unfortunately, because we're missing several properties uh, for the previous month, we we aren't going to report this today, just because it would be an incomplete report. So we'll come back and hopefully we'll double up double up next month. Okay. All right. Then we'll move on to events and uh, sales update. And James. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Okay, if you see on the first slide here, um, trying to recap some of what we've discussed at our last board meeting. 
Um, I tried to keep the format the same in terms of the cancellations and pendings, but I've added a new uh, thing over there about uh, active. These are events that have not canceled, and we have worked to continue to have the events under the condition that there will be some social, dis social distance guidelines uh, in place. Um, and we'll talk about those. Lydia, can you move to the next? Or oh, sorry, you can keep it here. Um, go back one more. Um, the three main ones here are the July events, the Downtown Revival Car Show, the All War Sports um, Series, and then the Carson Hoop Circuit. These are the three main events that's taking place in July that we have been pushing to um, continue under the guidelines that things could change at any moment. Um, things could get worse and we would have to delay the event or potentially cancel or postpone the event. Um, but we felt that if things continue to trend in the right direction, that um, there is a pop an opportunity for these events to continue. Um, next slide, please. Uh, hey, James. Yes. James. Yes. Um, on that slide, the if you can go back to that slide. I just wanted to, to also make the announcement that uh, the Downtown Business Association is working with the Revival Car Show to yes. um, to share that event for the Downtown Throwdown. It's a cornhole tournament that we would have had May 16th, but obviously you know had to cancel that. So we are um, just wanted to share that with you. We're, we're hoping to uh, capitalize on that, share that event to have something more for our downtown businesses to uh, to thrive from. Thank you. Correct. Thank you, Mike. And I'm, I'm actually going to go into more details about those three that are taking place in July in, in the upcoming slides. Um, and so in this section here, obviously, the Motor Officer Challenge um, was a June event that has been postponed and rescheduled for September. And also the Silver State Art Festival is um, still planning on bringing their their gourd festival um, to Carson City at Fuji Park. So those things are still active. We're still working on helping them with their marketing promotions. Um, and we're pushing for those events to, to hopefully continue. The, the new one on there, this uh, Suffragist uh, Centennial Motorcycle Ride, this was actually something that was a partnership um, between us and the Chamber of Commerce actually referred them to us to kind of work with them to bring their event in August, their race, their ride here to Carson City on their route through uh, Highway 50. Through the recent COVID-19 changes, they've had to cancel that event for this year, and I'm working on them to see what we can do to make sure that we have this event next year um, around the same time. This is uh, the, uh, the event that Mike was talking about. This is the Downtown Revival Car Show. Um, Sharon is is wonderful to work with. It, it's amazing to see this event go in three years to go from a new event to um, the biggest car show event that we have in Carson City. It, it originally started with um, the close Robinson Street all the way to Musser, and then last year is when they had to push it all the way to Fifth Street. Um, I'm not sure if anyone uh, has had the opportunity to see that in the past, but it's it's a it's a wonderful event and it's very well organized. And this, in partnership with what Mike Riggs was referring to with um, the cornhole tournament, I think would be a great um, addition to that. Now we've talked about social social distancing guidelines. Uh, some of the things that we specifically talked about was potentially maybe having the cars a specific distance away far enough um, so that we can adhere to the guidelines of you know, six feet. Um, those are the kind of discussions that we're having. Uh, we talked about sanitation with Mike Riggs for the Cornhole Tournament and, and things that we'll continue to work on to perfect and hoping that the event will take place. Uh, next slide, Lydia, please. This, this is the All World Sports uh, Series. This event is actually one of their bigger tournaments that takes place both in Carson City, Reno, and um, Sparks. So they utilize all three facilities. And so we are working with them to uh, 
um, continue to have this event, some of the guidelines that we talked about for this particular event is to maybe only have the teams that are participating at the facility when they're playing. And then when they are done playing, they would have to uh, leave for the next team to come. Um, and this is an event that we've been, that's been in Carson City for years, right? And so the following event, this Carson City shootout um, was an event that we were supposed to have in May. We've been working with Parks and Rec about the MAC facility, see when we can utilize that. And these are the dates that they have selected. Um, the social distancing guidelines for this one here is similar to the baseball ones where uh, only the teams that are participating at that time will be allowed at the facility to, to make sure that we try to stay um, under the 250 potentially if we're in phase three. Um, any questions about some of those things so far? Uh, yeah, I do have a question for you regarding the hoop circuit. Um, yes. <clears throat> so the the city league that was canceled this season, are those the types of, of teams that are going to be participating in this, or is this completely different? This is a youth, youth teams, um, 14 to 17 year olds. Thank you. And, and so all three of these events, the, the base basketball tournament, the baseball tournament and the, um, the car show, we're waiting until 30 days out for the event before we send out, uh, to all the lodging properties, um, in RFQ. And we did that purposely because we're we're still kind of concerned that things at any moment could change, and we wanted to delay that as much as as further out as we can before we actually send out that RFQ to all the lodging properties. And it gave the event organizer an idea of how many teams they could potentially anticipate for. And so you'll start seeing uh, the lodging properties. We'll start seeing those RFQs come out um, this coming week. And then they'll proceed every following week up until we're done with that one. Thank you. Um, just an update on the NTA Travel Exchange. They have, this was the um, event that was supposed to take place in Reno this coming November. They've actually made some changes to it to where it's actually all virtual now. And so I will be in our office um, working with and meeting with clients, potential clients uh, in the motor coach industry uh, via one v one v one appointments um, through a video conference. Where I don't know exactly the details how that's going to work and shape out, but some of the things that they have released already are some of the bullet points I put out here. Um, so it's the registration that we've already paid for is covered. Um, to, and then our membership, because in order for us to even participate, we have to be NTA members. Some of the fees that we have paid for Travel Exchange has went towards our complete membership dues for 2021. And they've also given us a $200 credit for uh, Trex in 2021. So, so those are some of the things that NTA has put together to try and help balance the cost of what we've paid in for the registration. Um, but at the same time, provide us with, with value so that we can continue to have the event. And James, can it's Dave. Could I just jump in for a quick second? Yes. Yeah. So the good news is uh, confirmed with the Reno Sparks Convention Visitors Authority, uh, NTA will be coming to Reno uh, next year. So they're going to push the physical conference forward by one year. So the schedule will all sort of domino down. But uh, I'm super excited about that because we have a lot riding on the physical conference in terms of the pre and post conference uh, FAMs, as well as some of the pre-conference activities. And uh, James and I were also working on, on something else with the RSCVA uh, to showcase Carson City uh, for those motor coach operators that wanted to come down and do a special activity down here in Carson City as well. So hopefully <laughs> everything will hold uh, true for next year, uh, November 2021. So. And is there any other questions or concerns? Mm -hmm. Thank you, James, for the update. Um, we'll move on to the marketing and PR update with Lydia. Lydia. 
Lydia, are you there? How about now? Can you hear me now? We can. Thank you. Yeah, there you are. Okay. Great. Right. If you guys have any questions throughout this, please interrupt me. I can't see you when I'm presenting, so um, just interrupt me at any time if you have any questions. But we'll start with our PR report. Um, not a lot happened in May as far as press goes, as you can imagine. Um, but we were tracking still with Cision through KPS3, uh, the unique visitors per month. And so this month we received uh, 1.2 million UVPM and a publicity value of $896. But this year to date, we've received a reach of 3.6 million people. We've had 653 million unique visitors per month and a publicity value of $518,000. And you can see the three articles that we were featured in. This Matador network got us quite a bit of press um, being mentioned in this article. Bear with me here. There we go. So today what we're going to go over is I'd like to present our proposal for how we are going to be marketing Carson City throughout fiscal year 21 and give you an idea of the media, proposed media plan and the budget. So we'll talk about where we're headed, the marketing focus, what our messaging and voice will be, where our target markets we're looking at are, and then the media plan and budget. So let's start with where we're headed, which not a lot of us know. So the future is pretty unclear, and the post-COVID world probably isn't going to exist. It's going to be something that's going to be part you know, of our daily lives from here on, on out. Um, but our focus is going to be on the great outdoors and Carson City's unique selling points. We're going to be smart with our spending and our advertising given a limited budget, and we'll be focusing on the safety of our visitors and the promotion of our community. So what is our unique selling point, and how do we take advantage of it? We're the capital, and no one else can claim that in Nevada. But in addition to our rich history, we've got a lot to offer outdoors, which I'm not telling you guys anything new that you don't even know. But we're wide open and we're pretty widely interesting. So we'll be focusing on those points for the most part. Because those are the things that we can control. So what is the fiscal year 21 marketing focus? We're going to be focusing on drive markets. Um, Dave and I have sat in on quite a few webinars on a weekly basis and we're gathering all this information from tons of research that's being done and on a, on a weekly uh, data point basis. So drive markets, as you can imagine, as people don't want to fly, at about a 400-mile radius is what we'll be focusing on. We'll be maximizing limited marketing dollars by using uh, a limited radius to our most popular drive markets, and we'll be targeting them with very specific interests, like those who are interested in outdoors, in hiking, and in history, instead of doing a more blanketed search um, when we had more, more marketing dollars to work with, uh, that approach we could afford but we'll be really focusing on those specific people. So we're getting the right visitor, and our marketing dollars are going to the right people. Um, as mentioned, we'll be exploring that great outdoors messaging first, and we'll get to a couple of those messages we're proposing or, or mulling around at this point. And we ideally want to focus on our itineraries page. And the first thing that people are going to want to do when they come to a city now is know what's open and what they can do safely. So that safety first messaging is going to be really important all the way from, you know, how our trails work to our hotels. So that itinerary option is going to be something that I think we can really utilize and I'm really excited that we built into the website so that people have a one-stop shot of what a day look like, looks like or a three-day weekend looks like in Carson City, um, you know, given we do have any kind of limitations that come up in the future and especially this summer. So what's our messaging and our voice? So potential campaigns that we're mulling around, um, we're not finalized on a specific one yet, but wanted to give you an idea of where our head's at. So with Nevadans being our primary focus, because that's our, largely our, our drive market um, and what we can really capitalize on our uniqueness on, uh, no pun intended, you know, we want to play on that capital experience. So for Nevadans, we could play on that capitalize your Nevada experience, capitalize on the great outdoors, uh, do a series about Capital Unknown, where we highlight the really unique points about Carson City that maybe not a lot of people know, or those hidden trails. Uh, maybe one that's, no, Vegas isn't the capital of Nevada, which uh, many people in southern Nevada 
um, tend to think sometimes. So uh, we've got some fun ideas maybe planned around that. Discover your capital. And then also for those outside of Carson City, you know, delightfully undiscovered. And our voice during this time, it's been pretty bleak for the last few months. And obviously this was made before, um, you know, everything that's been happening in the last week. So um, take that into consideration. You know, obviously we're going to be, um, we don't want to be tone deaf and we want to acknowledge what's going on. But we also want to be lighthearted and cheeky and have that safety first messaging so that people feel good about coming here. And um, this is their place to escape. So we really want to keep that messaging first. So we want to know we take their safety seriously, but there's still a great time to be had in Carson City. Who are our target markets? We're going to be focusing on that 400 drive mile radius, um, approximately give or take. That puts us basically right to Vegas, um, and not right to Vegas, but also LA. Um, and most of those ad dollars will be directed to that zero to four hour drive time, since that's really um, our largest target market set includes Sacramento and, and San Francisco. And who are our target audiences? Definitely the outdoor enthusiasts looking for the wide open spaces, distance from people, and the best, some of the best trails in northern Nevada. We want the history buffs that are looking for that capital experience and looking, to more, looking for more history indoors and outdoors, which is where our Kit Carson Trail, I think, is going to be a really great asset during this time, especially to our older visitors and also to Nevadans focusing on our locals uh, near and far to rediscover their state especially thinking about if you did a survey of people who have lived in Reno for more than 10 years and how many of them have actually been to Carson City, um, we'd be interested to see how many people have come here in, <laughs> in the last 10 years. We definitely got that pulse when we were at the Balloon Festival. Um, we had quite a few people that even came up to us saying, oh, you guys have like a visitor bureau? I don't think I've been to Carson City in over 20 years. So um, we really want to tap into that local market to get, let them rediscover Carson City, um, and then branch out from there. So let's get into the media plan on how much we plan on spending and what we plan on spending it on. So our media mix is going to start primarily with Google search. That way, people who are searching for Carson City, who are truly interested in coming here, we're going to be first and foremost in their face and telling them exactly what they can do so they can really incorporate us into their planning experience. And then display and retargeting is also done through Google Ads so that people who have searched us before, we can deliver them messaging um, again and again so that we keep top of mind. True View video is YouTube videos. And we had a lot of success with that in the time that we ran, especially while we were building the new site. The YouTube advertising really kept us top of mind, especially utilizing some of those amazing videos that we had done. Social media will be about 16%. Um, we had a ton of success with that last year, and we can also incorporate more video, and Facebook is, is really starting to build their platform. I'm real to, actually most excited to see what we're going to be able to do with Pinterest in the small amount that we invested last year um, or this year. Uh, it, was, it was really successful, and I think that's a tapped market that I think we can really spend a little of that amount of money and do big work. 7% will be print advertising. And then 13% will be influencer more in a uh, fam format and or an individual tours and media fans as well. We want to capitalize on the people that are traveling that can showcase that it's safe to come to Carson City, what you can do while you're here, and they have that trusted voice. I think that the media writers and the influencers are going to be a really important part of building trust in our community and showing that it's safe to, to come here and that we care about their safety while they're here. So let's move on to the budgeting. We're looking at about $150,000 um, as, our, as our annual spend this year. As you can see, we already went through the percentage of the breakdown of the budget, but our proposed media mix of what we'll be doing through social media will be the Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest advertising that we did this year. Our print ads are going to be is quite a bit smaller than it was last year. Uh, we'll be focusing on Adventure Sports Journal so that the events that we do have, which are mostly outdoors, we can promote to a very targeted audience that mostly lives in California who are our major markets. So I wanted to make sure we got into that target audience. Um, the Travel Nevada Visitor Guide and Golfing Nevada 
And all three of these have value adds beyond just a printed page. So you'll, Golfing Nevada also does a second publication in, in Oregon Golfing mag Magazine. Um, it also travels to different uh, conventions for golf and hands out that magazine too. And there's also some digital ads that can come along with that as well. So we want to be very specific to make sure we're not just getting a printed page, but also some value adds beyond that. And then for search, we'll be just doing the Google ads as we have been, doing display and retargeting through, re retargeting through Google ads and through Facebook, because you can actually combine the two on the back end, which is really exciting. So people who are visiting Facebook, we can combine that audience into Google ads. And so maybe they haven't searched for us on Google, but they've been following us on Facebook. We can still deliver them ads too. And then the video will continue with that YouTube advertising. And with that, very long presentation. <laughs> uh, do you guys have any questions that I can answer for you on that or any other slides I can go back to for you? Lydia, this is Mike guess. Um, I have a question for you. Um, when somebody does a Google search, um, say I know it's going to depend on what they put in the search, but say they do Carson City, for example, where do we line out as far as our Visit Carson City website um, when they put in a particular search for our town? Well, I would say when we were advertising and, and using those dollars and actually uh, doing Google ads, we were, we were up there pretty high. Um, what we were finding was that there is a Carson, California, and we were, um, we were getting confused with them. And so some of our ads were pulling to people searching just for Carson. So to make sure that we were being smart with our spends, we specifically only were paying for people searching for Carson City. So um, I would say for Carson, maybe we don't come up as high, but that's also because we don't want to spend money that isn't relevant to us. But I would say if someone's searching Carson City, we were definitely up there at, at the top. Okay, thank you. I don't know if I could say the same right now because we haven't been spending any money in the last three months, so that's probably dropped. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I looked earlier today and I typed in Car City. We were on, high up on the first page. Um, so, yeah, but you're right. If they put in Carson, they're going to get Carson, California. Any other questions for Lydia? You know, I absolutely think we're on the right track with the outdoors and, and putting that as our, and I think, um, you know, with the situation we're in right now and um, with every um, challenge, there's opportunity. And I think our opportunity is those people who have been cooped up and they want, you know, you can be out on a trail and you, you can't social distance that, right? And so I think, uh, <laughs> I think we're on the right, right track there. I just want to make a comment too. Well, thank you for your time. It's funny how we, you know, we had talked about this a few before COVID nineteen that we wanted to look into our locals, um, and I think, you know, as we're finding out, um, you know, the locals really is the lifeblood of our small businesses in our community, and I just think that really it, it, COVID nineteen has just brought this closer and faster up on on the agenda process, but uh, I agree, we're, we're on the right track. This is, this is great, Lydia. Thank you for putting the time in on this. Yeah, and I, I well, thank you for your time, a, and I totally agree. Yeah, I, I add a little story about the Go locals. Ahead. I had a call from a local Carson City resident who saw the article about the Kit Carson Trail and the dollars, and we had a fantastic conversation. He and his wife have walked the Kit Carson Trail like 600 something times. Uh, so I called Lydia, well, I called Lydia after I was talking to him, and I, I said to him while I was on the phone, I said, mm, would you be, cons you know, consider like our Navigate Like a Nevadan? Talk about having a local person who's done this 600 plus times, and we could have them on the website. You come on to the Kit Carson Trail page, and here's a local telling you about their experience and why they go out and do this and learn new things, you know, every time they go out. And Lydia thought it was brilliant. I think it might have been her words, but, you know, uh, I'll take credit for it, whatever she, whatever she meant. Uh, but, yeah, those sorts of things I, I think are great, you know, where we can involve our locals who really have a passion about a particular experience, a place, a site, a location, whatever, in Carson City. We'll leverage that, right? People connect with that on a local level and a, a very authentic, um, deep, I think, uh, you know, cultural level with people. So, 
Yeah, and I'm proud of our website. I really think that's going to be the foundation, and I'm so happy that we put in the time to really do it right because it's going to really set us up for success in, in this, you know, what we all know is going to be an interesting year to, to market and tourism. So I think we've got all of the, the right things in place to be able to um, really get the right people to Carson City that, that want to be here. Thanks for your time. Great. Thank you, Lydia. Mm, future agenda items. Uh, requests from the board members for future agenda items can be made at this time. Anything that you want to see in our next meeting? Speaking of our next meeting, it will be July 13th, uh, right here in the Sierra Room um, at 4 p.m. Uh, at this time, I'll ask for any board comments or announcements and requests for information. Mm -hmm. I have a comment, Stacey. Chair Jones. Um, so last month, is Stacy on? So last month, being on the WebEx, um, I didn't give myself a chance to comment about our meeting last month. I know we had to make some tough decisions, some hard choices, and I wanted to thank uh, you, David, and your staff for um, accepting those uh, the things that we had, to, the choices that we had to make, and but continuing to have the passion to work and move forward on what you guys are doing. I think our messaging is spot on. Um, we've had to change things, obviously. And um, I think, um, you know, we're showing people that are, um, we're trying to bring our town back. And, and um, you know, with James bringing these events in and talking to the people that are coming in here and uh, letting them know that we're going to um, do everything to stick to the guidelines and be safe. Um, so I just wanted to uh, express my appreciation for the, the sacrifices and also for the uh, commitment and the passion that you guys continue to show. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, no, these guys have been, been awesome through this whole mess over the last three three months or so. So appreciate them sticking sticking by. We're, we're going to come out of it on the end. So sure. take us a little while, but I think we're on the slight incline here, I hope. So thank you. No, I think we're positioned well to do well when we do. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I have a comment to Stacy. Yes. Um, actually, I have one comment and one question. Um, I'll start with a comment. Uh, I am hearing that we may be having a special session. Um, I know that rumor has been out there a bit, and uh, it started off that it was going to be in late June, and then I heard August to September, and now I'm hearing that we are looking again at sometime the last full week of June. Um, that's not set in stone yet. I know the Economic Forum meets with um, their subcommittee and uh, the key leaders on the 10th, but I think with the state's shortfall, they're probably not going to be able to wait that long to take some action. At least that's what I'm hearing right now. So that may help, um, you know, some of the room uh, rates. I, I don't know if it's gonna go more than a day um, it's possible that it's only a day-long session, but maybe fingers crossed it goes a couple of days and and uh, we can get some, uh, you know, some uh, Southern Nevada and visiting legislators staying in uh, uh, some of our great hotels. Um, and then my question is uh, relative to the board openings, uh, David. If you've heard anything from the city on when they're opening and um, uh, when that might come before us as a board of supervisors, I neglected to ask yes. city manager. I, yes, I can, uh, for the record, Dave Peterson, yeah, I can uh, address the conversation I just had with Janet Pussy today about that. Um, she, she has a document in front of me to look at as far as the description for the CTA board, and the hope is it will release on Friday of this week, and then it's going to sit out there till about the 17th or so of July uh, with the plans of bringing the applicants in front of the Board of Supervisors at the first meeting in August. And that's that's what I know right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and the good news is though, we don't just disappear as a board, right? As of August 1st, um, everybody s still retains their, their position, right? Until such time as you're reappointed. Um, so we will continue our meetings as normal uh, with the August meeting, right? We don't have to cancel the meeting. So that, that was a, you know, confirmed that with Janet today. So that's a good thing. Good. Any other questions for David? 
the board. Uh, I'll ask again for public comment. Public's invited at this time to make a statement. Any public comment? There is no public comment, Mr. Chair. All right. Hearing none, we'll move on to our last uh, item, and that is a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. We're adjourned. <laughs>